Well, Galatians chapter 6, I want to read beginning at verse 12. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid. Interesting to me that the New King James follows the Old King James here, and that is not a literal translation, God forbid, but it follows the Old King James and I suspect the reason for that is because of the strength of this adverse, this adversative here. To say God forbids about as strong as you can express something. And of course, literally, it would be something like, may it never be perish the thought. Um, that sort of would be more of a literal translation. But God forbid that I should boast or glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Considering Paul's history as a devout religious Jew who once despised the mention of the name of Jesus and would have never said some of the things he has just written here regarding circumcision, uncircumcision, and so forth, he would have never said those things at one time. He would have been appalled at anybody who would have spoken this way. And yet here, it's, he's saying the things he's saying. What a testimony to amazing grace that he writes what he does in especially verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul experienced life transformation and that experience was from the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is not what he was. And the reason that he is not what he was is due completely and solely to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He saw in the cross of Jesus Christ what the law pointed to but could never accomplish. His relation to this world and his perspective in this world was revolutionized, which is what he means when he says, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This world was no longer his life. And in saying that, I am not saying, at least in the mind of the Apostle Paul, that he was no longer living after the lusts of the flesh. There's a sense in which Paul didn't do that, at least not externally. His own testimony was concerning the righteousness which was in the law blameless. Nevertheless, he lived in relationship to this world. He was driven by the flesh. The same thing that his Jewish counterparts, unconverted, were driven by. In verse 12, as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh. And you, you know his testimony in Philippians chapter 3 speaks of that. He lived his life for a good showing. And that's what I mean by saying this world was no longer his life. The flesh was no longer his life. He didn't live for a good showing. He was a new creation in Christ. 
His life, as he writes about in Colossians chapter 3, was hidden with Christ in God. Because of what the cross of Jesus Christ meant to Paul, and I hope that you and I are able to relate to this tonight, Because of what the cross of Jesus Christ meant to Paul, once a proud, self-righteous Pharisee who came to see by God's grace that he was the chief of sinners, he could never again glory in that which he once gloried in. The only thing he could glory in was in the accomplishment of Jesus Christ. This is why he says what he says. But God forbid. Brethren, that needs to be our heart tonight. God forbid that I should boast, that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Tonight we turn our attention together to the same Jesus and the same cross of our Lord Jesus Christ that so captivated the mind and affection of Paul. And it needs to captivate our mind and our affections. The cross of Jesus Christ. Tonight, as we remember together the death of our Savior, I want to suggest to us a fresh renouncing or a renouncing in a fresh way. A number of things that would surely resonate with the mind and heart of the Apostle Paul. When he says, but God forbid, there certainly was at work in him that sense of of putting away, renouncing anything and everything that once would have vied for the spot that now the cross of Jesus Christ held in his mind and heart. And so I want to encourage us tonight as we take these elements together to renounce in a fresh way, first of all, all confidence in our flesh. No confidence in our flesh, in our reforms, in our accomplishments, in our religious activity. No confidence in our flesh. Horatius Bonar put it this way, Not what my hands have done can save this guilty soul. Remember that tonight. You know, we know that theologically. But renounce all confidence in your flesh. Not what my toiling flesh has borne can make my spirit whole. Not what I feel or do can give me peace with God. Not all my prayers and sighs and tears can bear my awful load. Tonight, glory, rejoice, boast in the cross of Christ alone as you take those elements, renounce in a fresh way your flesh, any confidence in your flesh, renounce it. Renounce in a fresh way all confidence in your righteousness or your perceived righteousness or self-satisfying deeds of the law. I'm not saying glory and lawlessness. That's not the point. I'm saying do not place confidence in your own righteousness before God. Renounce that. As you partake tonight, remember, as you take that bread and you take that cup, remember what Paul said, not by works of righteousness, which I have done, but according to his mercy, 
according to your, make it personal, according to your mercy, you saved me. I'm not trusting in what I'm doing even right now. Augustus Toplady put it this way, not the labors of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know, could my tears forever flow, all for sin could not atone, thou must save. Remember that tonight. Thou alone, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. As you hold that bread, as you hold that cup, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Renounce all confidence in your own righteousness or self-satisfying deeds of the law tonight in a fresh way. Renounce any tendency that may arise within you to share the glory and praise that belongs to our beloved Savior alone. I believe that the attitude and the spirit that we ought to be serving our God under is such that when we get to the end of our journey, and if there is a crown that is passed out to us, we were talking about this the other day, we would be amazed that any attention is given to us because we are so overwhelmed by our Savior. And we know that will be the case in that day. He's the light of that city, not us. And so any tendency that may arise within us to share, just give me a piece, give me a part. I know you did most of it, Jesus, but I got to have a little bit in this. I got to have a little bit of glory. No, no, remember, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy name, unto thy name. Give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Think about that as you hold that bread and hold that cup tonight. A fresh renouncing of any tendency. Place a God forbid there. God forbid that I should glory, that I should glory. Except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then renounce in a fresh way any relationship to anything in or about this world. And I'm taking this from Paul's words when he says, By whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Anything in this world, anything about this world that would dull your sense of the glory of our Savior. And there are those things in this world that can do that. In a fresh way tonight, renounce it. Can you even say, Lord, if there's something I'm not even aware of, I am not aware that that is what is dulling my sense. Show it to me that I might get rid of it that I might renounce it, repent of it. Now, if you pray that in sincerity, be ready. Be ready for what He may show you, but I can assure you as hard as it may be to renounce or repent of that thing, the result will be incredible full fullness of glory within you that will override any pain of separation from that which has had a hold of you. And has been blocking the glory of the cross 
seeing the glory of the cross of Jesus Christ. The writer to Hebrews of the Hebrew letter said it this way, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance, with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. But you've got to lay aside. See, looking unto Jesus doesn't come first. Lay aside. Renounce anything that's in the way. The hymn writer said, nothing between my soul and the Savior. Nothing. So that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of His favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing be twain. Is that your heart tonight? God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we partake tonight, we do not remember our worthiness. So whatever preparations you do, do not focus on your worthiness. We remember Him. And we glory in His cross alone. Tonight, we join together in the spirit of the Apostle Paul, having experienced, I trust it's true for you, the same transformation of our lives that Paul experienced. Now, you may not have had a Damascus Road experience. I mean, the details vary. But has it happened in your life where once you were blind to the glory of the cross of Christ, but you have seen the glory of the cross of Jesus Christ? It, in fact, that is what has changed your life, transformed your life, and continues to do so. If so, then tonight enter in, in the spirit. That's why I'm saying in the spirit of the apostle Paul. Let us join together with this attitude. God forbid that I should boast, that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember him tonight. Who by his death delivered us from the wrath to come. Think about that as you take that bread and Take that cup. He has delivered you and me from the wrath to come, taking the curse of the law upon himself, becoming a curse for us in his own body on the tree. He has done that. We remember him who delivered us from the bondage of sin and this present evil world, crucified to the world and the world to us and all of that in and by the cross of Jesus Christ that we remember tonight. We remember him who will yet deliver us from the very presence of sin. There was a point today in my own mind. I didn't say it out loud because of the who I was around, but in my own mind, I just felt tired. I am tired of this battle. I am Tired of what I have to struggle with. I am tired of it. You ever feel that way? Tired of it. And so as I, but right now, I'm encouraged because I'm not thinking about me and what I'm going through. I'm thinking about Him and what He went through. And He's coming again. And He's going to deliver me and He's going to deliver you from the very presence of sin and the impact of sin. And I and you and we will never, ever, ever again struggle like we struggle now. We look unto Jesus by faith tonight. As you take that bread and take that cup, look unto Jesus by faith with hope-filled anticipation of His glorious appearing. When everything will be made right, 
everything that is wrong will be made right. Should we be bothered that there are some things that are wrong? Should we? Yes. Even in our own lives, we ought to be bothered. In our own families, we ought to be bothered. But that's going to pass away. And all things that are being made new now will be completely new. Totally. All things. So tonight, we partake together as a church of blood bought saints. And yes, we think of one another. And if I were to bring a message tonight about thinking of one another, I wouldn't be out of line because that is what we're doing. We're fellowshipping together in the blood and body of Christ. It is communion together. We're doing this together. But oh, brothers and sisters, it's him. It's him, not us, that we must glory in as we partake of these elements together tonight. God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ.